<laughs> Hello everybody, it's Luke Warren here, and I am here with a new form of reviewing for you guys. Today won't be a one review, but it's going to be a movie review. The first movie reviews I'm going to do for you guys are going to be reviews on the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. So here we go. So this is the first one in 2002. So, um, my movie reviews are going to work like this. I'll explain the story, then the characters, then the action, uh, um, <clears throat> and, all, and everything like that. So in terms of the main plot line for the movie, um, this is really the origin story for Spider-Man. So here we go. So after the opening credit sequence, we get a um, a monologue from Peter Parker, who later on becomes Spider-Man, but, um, and we see in the opening scene of the movie, he is a nerd who is very frequently picked on, um, and for those who have watched the movie, you know I'm going with it, because on the bus, he has stuff like, say, spitballs thrown at him, people won't let him sit on the, on the seat with him, people intentionally trip him up, and and things like that, and then, um, around ten minutes in, um, everyone, all of, uh, because Peter's on a school trip with his class, so ten minutes into the movie, everyone arrives at Oscorp, and during a scene where Peter's taking images of Mary Jane for, um, for a newspaper, he ends up getting bitten by the spider during the trip, um, and then when he, when he comes home, he it, he doesn't feel very good, and then in bet in between that we have the um the father the father Norman Osborn, who is the um who was the creator of a company by the name of Oscorp, <clears throat> and by the time Peter returns home, well, not feeling very well, um it's at that point in the movie. <coughs> that we see Norman Osborn um, be, being assigned to a specific date for a contract for a contract quest with uh, uh, for Oscorp because otherwise Oscorp is going to be shut down um, and the test is on human performance enhancers and dur um, and during that scene it's then Norman becomes the main villain the Green Goblin um, because he he uses one of the human performance enhancers on himself. He goes mentally insane, murders Dr. Strom, and then the next morning, Peter awakes and has a much more muscular build. Um, so then he goes to school again. He gets in a fight with Flash at school, but then he runs out and tests his, and tests his new powers. Um, eventually, he is motivated to imp uh, impress MJ uh, with wanting to buy a car, and he sees mm -hmm. um, an offer in a paper saying if he can, if anyone can withstand three minutes with a competitor called Bone Saw, they'll be able to win three grand for a car. Um, and so Peter says he would go down to the downtown library, and then we have a, um, a scene in the car between Peter and Ben Parker. Uh, so after after claiming what, only one hundred of the three grand for actually beating Bones for in two minutes, Peter then be irresponsible and stops a and refuses to to stop a criminal who. Surprise, surprise, would later turn out to be the killer of Uncle Ben. And so Peter then takes up his ways as respon of responsibility and becomes Spider-Man. And then everything kind of boils down to him confronting the Green Goblin. So that's pretty much the story. In regards to the casting, uh, we have... Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, James Franco, um, Willem Dafoe, uh, 
those are the ones I can really think of in regards to main characters. Um, Toby Maguire, he will always be to me the per um the perfect Peter Parker slash Spider Man. I'm sorry to all of you who prefer Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield captured the Spider Man element but not so much for Peter Parker because in the comics Peter Parker is an awkward nerd which is obviously what Tobey Maguire hits the hammer on the nail on and also there are things which Maguire which Maguire's part, uh, Spider-Man does not do that actually benefit him because I know I'm going off on a tangent but just bear with me for instance in this trilogy Spider-Man would usually make quips when it's necessary, unlike Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, who would just spew one-liners left and right. I'm not pinning that on Garfield, I'm pinning that on the writers of the Amazing Spider-Man reboot, because god, are those movies bad. Not that I haven't really paid, seen either of them all the way through, but I know they're bad. <laughs> um... Then, uh, sorry for that. Then we have Kirsten Dunst as MJ, and in terms of chemistry, I think I prefer the Andrew Garfield slash Emma Stone chemistry in the Amazing movie, in the Amazing series. But even then, that's kind of screwed up. No, that no, that's really screwed up. Like really screwed up. Uh, we've got James Franco as Harry Osborn. Basically, everything about the Raimi trilogy, I feel, will just leave the Mark Webb duology in the dust. Because, well, let's face it, this trilogy was made by people who truly understand Spider-Man. Um, you've got Willem Dafoe as Norman Osborn slash Green Goblin, and damn, is he a good, is Willem Dafoe a good part for, for the role? Um, there were some who I know who were a bit this um uh, well, who may have been a bit hesitant about Willem Dafoe uh, for the part looking at you the game 2k2 uh, but he is very good for the role um well that's pretty that's pretty much the main cast um there are cameos by Bruce Campbell as the guy who announces the wrestling matches. Um, in terms of action, this is prob this it is a tad dated, but come on, it was 2002 for goodness sake. Um, there are a lot of ac there are a lot of action scenes um, in the movie, and I actually think they're pretty good. Except there are some occasions where it's just pretty bog standard stunt show type fights in in, in the movie. But that's just me, I suppose. Um, I can't really think of anything else to talk about with the movie. Um, so overall. Good story, good action, um, good casting, great directing, great score. Oh god, the score by Danny Elfman is a gold mine. Like, seriously, if any, if anyone ha has the soundtrack, just listen to the opening theme of this trilogy over and over again, <laughs> because, oh god, it's just pure brilliance. <laughs> but yes, that's just me being a music fanboy. Um great score now yes there are some flaws for instance the green goblin costume mm. that was terrible um this it, it, it this is a bit dated now compared to what we see in the modern days but let's face it this was done primarily with practical effects as opposed to having an overabundance of CGI looking at you amazing spider-man Sorry about that, the computer brightness of the screen lowered for some strange reason. 
Um, so yes. Overall, I get, um, I'm going to rate these movies on a scale of poor, um, poor, mediocre, good, great, and excellent. So, I would rate Spider-Man as a great movie. So, as a result, I'm gonna give this... I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a 7.5 out of 10. This is a very good movie. It is a bit dated. Green Goblin costume sucks. <laughs> but aside from those flaws, it is still a very entertaining movie. Very light-hearted. Very much resembles the tone of Spider-Man. Um, so yeah. Overall, Spider-Man, great movie. Anyone who hasn't seen it should check it out now. You don't know what you're missing. Anyway. That's me done with rambling, and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.